Okay, I'd like to uh, introduce uh, Rachel Stern, who is the Chief Digital Officer of New York City. Thank you so much, um, David. Thank you, Sally. Um, and everyone, welcome to New York City. This is an enormous honor to be here today um, for such an incredibly important um, conversation and discussion. And I'm really, really looking forward to hearing what everyone has to say. Um, just to frame everything a little bit before um, our very exciting keynote speaker starts, um, I'd just like to speak a little bit about um, New York City's digital strategy and to give a little bit of context to some of this discussion in terms of how here in New York City um, we're, we're looking at, at these evaluations. So, so I'll, speak, I'll speak shortly about that and um, uh, of course the context that you know, none of this would even be possible um, without, without the innovations um, um, that, uh, of the individuals who are, who are here today. Um, so, so just as a, as a quick background, um, um, I recently started with the, the city of New York and the mayor um, three weeks ago unveiled his uh, roadmap for the digital city, which looks at uh, very comprehensively and holistically where New York City is um, in terms of uh, connecting New Yorkers and, and allowing them to connect with each other, delivering services, um, and where, where we hope to be. And the report um, that the mayor presented was divided into three parts. The first part looks at where are we today um, the second part looked at uh, where, where, what could we be doing better, and the third part examines, well, what is our, what is our plan to get there? Um, and the first part, it was really thrilling to see that we're, we're actually in a, in a, in a very, um, in a really great place to begin. So New York City, through digital channels alone, reaches over 4 million unique individuals a month. That's 2.8 million on nyc.gov, the city's website. Um, and another 1.2 million through social media channels, such as Twitter, Facebook, and then even email newsletters. Um, on nyc.gov, uh, which has um, nearly a million pages all told across the city, um, the city's uh, Department of Information Technology and Telecommunications, and i and, um, very excited to see that the city's chief information officer and commissioner of that department is here today, maintains a 99.99% uptime rate and does a really phenomenal job of supporting all of these different digital endeavors. The city has over 200 social media channels um, and over 100 individuals who are, their their day-to-day -job, day -day job is making sure that they are using these tools to effectively connect with their constituents. To give a few examples of some of the ways that the city is using uh, information technology and, and digital media to unlock more information and put more power and control in the hands of New Yorkers, um, earlier this year the Department of uh, Buildings introduced QR codes on construction permits so that now anytime a New Yorker, and New Yorkers always want more information, um, sees uh, maybe a construction site where they have a few questions, they can hold up their smartphone, they can read that QR code and instantly get um, the full history of the person who's managing that site, prior violations, and a phone number to call them if they're interested. Um, in addition, the mayor's office, at NYC mayor's office on Twitter, holds a weekly initiative called Ask Mike, using the hashtag Ask Mike, um, that encourages New Yorkers to ask questions of the mayor. And every Friday, um, he responds to a few of those questions on his weekly radio show, breaking down barriers and, and really creating a direct line of communication. Um, in addition, um, again, at Do It, the city's IT, agen IT agency, um, the Geospatial Information Services team has created a phenomenal resource in um, the 311 service request map. So that is, um, that is a map that's maintained by the city that is updated um, on a regular basis to provide uh, really complete transparency um, and accountability for the city's efforts. And it does this by providing um, over 15 different types of service requests, which are you know, essentially 311 complaints and, and things that New Yorkers want to be resolved. Um, they overlaid this on a map divided up by community board, and it shows here the number of requests, here's, uh, here's, here's what's been filed in the past five days, and really creates a, a fantastic tool for, for accountability for, for citizens. Um, and then again, you know, on, on the lighter side, we see that uh, the Department of Health has created uh, or, or sorry, the Department of Transportation has created a Tumblr blog called The Daily Pothole that tracks also with, with great tra um, transparency how many potholes were fixed that weekend um, and shows on an overlay the map of how these things are being fixed. Um, 
and this is just this is just a sample. In addition, uh, one of the most fascinating um, and and really impressive achievements of of the city is the um, is its open data initiatives. Um, and this includes uh, the New York City data mine, um, which is maintained by, again, by Do It, by the city's IT agency, provides nearly 400 um, open data sets that developers are able to use to create applications, tools, features, et cetera. And to market and incentivize individuals to use uh, these data sets, um, the city has created the NYC Big Apps Competition. Um, which is sponsored by BMW I Ventures, so the $40,000 uh, plus dollars in prize money that is provided every, every month um, or every year um, is essentially at little or no cost to taxpayers. And some of the, some of the results that we've seen from this is um, the Rotify app, which is a social transit app that enables New Yorkers to report in real time their social transit experience. For example, you can find out ahead of time if your subway, if the if your subway line is maybe running a little bit behind, if there's a free parking spot nearby, um, or even if there's traffic on the road. And that's a great example because it's not just user generated; it's pulling from Department of Transportation information, it's pulling from the MTA, and it's pulling from Google Transit. Um, so it shows the advantage there. And a last a last example from the NYC Big Apps competition is the Don't Eat at um, application, which was another winner. Um, which integrates with Foursquare, a location sharing platform, so that if you check into a restaurant um, in New York City and that restaurant may be in danger of being shut down because of health code violations, you immediately get an alert on your phone that lets you know <laughs> that maybe you want to reconsider that choice. Um, so, and in addition to that, the city um, has a 98% residential broadband um, access uh, rate and has just surpassed Boston to become number two in venture funding um, nationally. So by all these uh, different indices, uh, New York City is really in a, um, a phenomenal position. But you know, as, as New Yorkers, we're never going to rest on our laurels, and we're going to continue to innovate. So as part of this investigation and this evaluation, we also asked New Yorkers, what do they want? What are they not yet seeing that we could be doing a better job of in New York City government? And number one um, was internet access. And in many different forms, people wanted uh, Wi-Fi on the subways um, and in public transport. People were interested in greater broadband connectivity. Uh, when we were talking to um, when we were talking to businesses, many of them wanted greater uh, broadband connectivity, um, faster broadband connectivity, so that they could uh, ramp up what they're doing. Um, also, on the business side, engineering talent was a was a major request. Um, so. After evaluating all of these different input points, and we had over 4,000 points of input, both through in-person meetings, through meetups, through workshops, and through tools like Quora and Twitter and Facebook and Tumblr, um, we developed um, holistically as a city a digital roadmap that centers on four pillars, which are access, open government, engagement, and industry. And we really believe that, um, that in order to fully realize the city's digital potential, we, we need to be focusing on all of these things at once because they're so, they're so interrelated. Um, on access, um, the city as, is, is one of the recipients of the Broadband Technologies Opportunity Program and, 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 and through Do It and the Department of Education will be um, we'll be bringing uh, nearly uh, 80,000 individuals um, broadband internet access um, based uh, starting out with um, sixth graders who are um, receiving cash assistance and that enables them to get broadband at home and the training they need. Um, every library, every branch of every library in New York City currently has Wi-Fi that will be further supported and, and expanded. Um, and the city continues to support public-private partnerships um, that bring Wi-Fi to more public spaces. And, and just last week, um, AT&T um, <clears throat> joined the mayor to announce uh, uh, Wi-Fi internet access in 20 parks. Um, and we also saw earlier Dumbo is getting Wi-Fi. Um, um, in the open um, government space, so the city is already doing a, a very, uh, really a phenomenal job. Um, the next steps um, that Do It is, is really taking the lead on is that we will be introducing an API. So in addition to these data sets, um, we will be uh, unveiling an API that enables developers to create apps that are constantly up to date and receiving real-time feeds, and also exp expand that to 311, the city's uh, customer service platform that helps um, individuals navigate all of these different, um, all of the many different city agencies. Um, 
And, that, and that's another way that the city will be decentralizing and, and unlocking the potential of New York City as a platform. And this will be called New York City Platform to reflect that. Um, finally, with engagement, we're bringing um, greater coordination internally to those 100 plus social media managers, et cetera, and also introducing one-stop shops on Twitter, Facebook, Foursquare, and Tumblr that for instance, incentivize New Yorkers to visit more public spaces. Um, and lastly, in the industry section, there's an enormous amount that the city's Economic Development Corporation does, and I'm sure many of you um, who are from New York are familiar with this, um, and, and um, they will just be continuing to build on that with more affordable workspaces in the Bronx, in Brooklyn, and with the, uh, with the plan to issue an RFP um, for a, a new or expanded applied sciences facility in New York City. And we really believe that by cultivating um, that next generation of engineers, that's, that's going to provide the talent pool that the city needs to continue to support um, these innovations. Um, so thank you for allowing me to, to, to sort of share with you some of, some of that. Um, and now it's uh, my great, great honor to invite to the stage uh, Sim, uh, Tim, Sir Tim Berners-Lee. <laughs> and I'll just do, do a quick introduction, as I'm sure you're all very impatient, as I am, um, to hear what he has to say. So again, um, here at the city, our goal is to use this technology, um, to use digital technology to connect New Yorkers and provide them with the services and information that they need. And essentially none of this would have been possible without the inventions um, of, 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 of Sir Tim Berners-Lee. Um, back in 1990, he invented, essentially, he invented the World Wide Web. Um, to add a little more context and, and specificity, that's you know the first ever web server, first ever URL first ever HTML page and link, and first ever web browser. And without enabling this, 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 level, of, um, this, this level of innovation, um, truly none of, none of what we're doing today would even be possible. Um, in addition to this, um, um, he is the director of the World Wide Web Consortium, W3C, founder of the World Wide Web Foundation, a senior researcher and holder of three COM founders chair at the MIT Computer Science and Artificial Intelligence Laboratory. He is the director of the Web Science Trust, and in April 2009, he was elected as a member of the United States National Academy of Sciences based, based in Washington, D.C. Um, and I'm incredibly humbled and honored to, uh, to introduce you now to uh, Sir Tim Berners-Lee.